sure. looks coming pretty handy because you can see you have this repeat loop and it's kind of small now, but you can see as it, it grows, the more blocks it contains. Now if I click on this, it says hello, hello I love my test steps and changes the color. That's that. And one of the and it's and if you had just if you had a, a hundred sprites, it would be kinda of hard to go in and keep clicking all and click all of the programs all of the scripts to start the program. So that's when that's when when the flag is clicked blocks come in really handy because now when the flag is clicked, the program starts. And all of the programs would start. <coughs> if you had however many sprites. So I'm gonna open up a B animation and show you guys some of The really great thing about Scratch is it has pre-made backgrounds and sprites. I never would have been able to draw these in a million years. So that's why it's really great that Scratch comes with these backgrounds, so that way you don't have to worry about having good graphics, because there's already stuff in there. And you can even include some of your own artwork and pictures. You just have to import them. So now when the flag is clicked, the B goes over here. It point in the direction of 90 degrees, and then I'm just going to let this guy run a little bit, and then I'll talk a little more about the program. So we already saw that it starts out somewhere over here. It points in the direction of 90 degrees. That means that it doesn't flip over and start fly flying off of the screen, because they, then we wouldn't be able to see it. So we have this costume tab. So costumes is a di are the different ways that the sprite can look. So here we have B1, which is wings up, and B2, which is wings down. <coughs> so like I said, we have this big repeat loop, and you can switch to the costume of B1, you can wait for two seconds, it's going to move 10 steps, and then switch to the costume B2. And then it's going to wait for two seconds, again it's going to move 10 steps, and turn, pick random, negative 30 to 30 degrees. So the pick random thing is really what makes this program unique, because ordinary, if I didn't have that block, it would just fly across the screen straight. But now you can see before it went up and curved around, and now it's going down and curving and doing whatever it's doing. So, and then if it's on an edge, it's going to bounce. So I'm making sure that it's not going to fly off the screen. So I'm going to open up the guinea pig game I made and talk a little about that. And talk a little bit about that. So, So the storyline of the game is that you're a guinea pig and you escape from your cage and you're running around the house trying to eat as much lettuce as fast as you can, but you want to avoid the pan because that takes oh, that takes time off of you. That adds time to your score. It's modeled off of my guinea pigs, Gitters and Fibonacci, and because they like to eat lettuce as fast as they can, but they hate getting picked up. And I got the idea for the game when my dad and I went out to lunch one day, and we were talking about, and, we were, and I had gone through the Raspberry Pi Educator's Guide, and we had, and we were talking, and I wanted to make a game, and we were thinking, and I have two guinea pigs, so, I, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm really into guinea pigs, so I decided to do the guinea pig game, and this is how it turned out, and it turned out pretty good. I'm not going to go through every line of code because that would take a while because there's a rather a lot of it, but not as much as some games. And you, you see this share button. The share feature allows you to share the game online so that way you can go to the Scratch website and other people can play your game. So I've already shared this project online, but we are going to go to the Scratch website as soon as I can figure out this whole two screen thing. So this is what my Scratch home screen looks like. It's, there's a what's happening, so all the Scratchers that I've followed, I can see what they love and favorite. So, and I can also create a project. And with, even if you're not like an expert with Scratch, you can you go in the create one, and we'll see that there's a, a there's a little tutorial thing. So there's this whole thing that describes all the blocks, how to, and getting started. So I'm just going to go back to the, so I'm going to go to this thing called myself, which is where I keep 
all my projects that I shared and well, also some of the projects that I have. Well, see here there's the Greek guinea pig escape, a couple untitled, untitled projects, and this aquarium project that I'm working on. And so I click on the guinea pig game, and you can see I can play it right in the browser, so I don't have to download anything. So it's really easy to share with people like my, my grandparents, or I can even share it with, friends, with my friends on Facebook. So it's, and one of the really cool things about Scratch is you can favorite project and you can also love them. And it's pretty neat because it's almost like a Facebook for code. So instead of liking your picture, you can like somebody else, you can like someone's code. So people can comment on your games unless you turn it off, but I think you really should keep it on. It's a great way to, you know, learn about bugs and also, and also people can give feedback. And if someone just keeps, and if someone says something really mean about your game, you can forward it and you can also delete it. And you can also report projects if it's inappropriate. So, how many of you guys like Mario? Or like Mario games? Yeah. So, I'm going to go into this game called Scratch Now. And it's a Mario style game. And <laughs> you can see, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a little bit just of just how complex these games can get. So here we have this scratch clone scratch things, blah blah blah. And we're gonna I hit play and it's like a fire game where there's coins and then you can stomp on enemies and all sorts of cool things. But one of the neatest one of the coolest things about Scratch is well, how many of you guys have ever seen the code for a Mario set? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty neat because with Scratch, you can see other people's code. So if I go into the Scratch character, you can see. <coughs> games get really complicated, but they're also really fun. So this is actually one of my favorite projects. And you can, like I said before, you can remix it. So if I wanted to take out all the monsters and make myself invincible, or give myself 20 lives, which would be useful seeing as I barely get past level one. <laughs> so it would be useful. And so it's just a pretty cool way to do scratch. And I'm going to go back on the slides so we can finish up. <laughs> so these are my references. Scratch.mit.edu Scratch website. <laughs> It's where you find, it's where you can do in browser coding, you can share your projects, all sorts of cool stuff, all sorts of cool stuff. My dad and I got a couple books, the Raspberry Pi Education Manual, it's a free download from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, it's very informative, it's a great resource, and we also got getting started with the Raspberry Pi from O'Reilly, and it's a, also a very good resource for getting started, and both of these books let you know things that you need to have so you don't have to remember, oh, I need a case. So, and the Greek Guinea Pig Escape is my game. It'll be awesome if you guys could try it. Remember to like it. <laughs> so, who's got the first question besides the chart? <laughs> On your uh, adventure to do this, have you uh, gotten to the point where you want to start looking more <clears throat> at Python as a way of uh, making a more advanced type uh, game? Or? I actually just got back from a Python conference at from, at, from Ohio at the Python Summit, and I was really excited a couple of friends and my mom and all my friends went shopping. I went to the Young Coders conference. <laughs> <laughs> a good time was had by all. The pain, <laughs> the pain you have to go through. Right. <laughs> so, so is Python the native language that uh, Scratch is written in? I don't actually know that. No. no. It's not. I thought it was written in a little No, it's not. The, the new version of Scratch 2.0, it's all written in Flash. Oh, yes. Uh, originally, they used 
something that, like a language they invented just to make Scratch. I think it's called Prologue or something like that. Prologue. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now, that's, that's been around for quite a while. Quite a while, uh, yeah. They, they created some weird language that you know compiled out of Java you know, this, like, this weird thing. Um, I, don't, I can't remember what it's called, but the new one is all written in Flash. Okay. What <coughs> What's the limit on the size for assets in those graphs? On the size what? Yeah. The, 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 uh, uh, the sprites, what's the limit? I don't, I don't believe there's any limit. I think it's just however many sprites you want to import. I haven't seen a limit, so. Can you use, uh, say, uh, five, well, so by size well, size sprites, you can use, there's a lot of different sprites you can use. In the new version, you can do vector graphics instead of uh, pixels. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Uh, also, what other formats? Uh, 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 sorry? Uh, sorry, uh, does it use PNG formats? Uh, yeah, it does it use PNG formats for the sprites or is it JPEG? Or, uh, I don't know. I, my team's report doesn't anything. It definitely does GIFs. And PNGs and JPEGs. Um, I don't think you can do SVGs. Uh, I just want to know if it does. does. Yeah, does it's, I don't know if it's SVG specific. Um, they've got a vector editor and a bitmap editor in the in the program. Cool. Do you know if you can get Alice to run on the uh, what you call it, the uh, Raspberry Pi? That's the Carnegie Mellon So Alice was. I, I think that was written in Python a while ago. It's proprietary. And so Carnegie Mellon needs to port it. It's not open source. Okay. Um, and, and the other thing is I know that Alice is, I would say, much heavier weight than Scratch. And so, and, but Scratch runs great on, on Raspberry Pi. That's what, what Warren was running on that worked really well. You want to uh, maybe demonstrate some of the uh, programming capabilities more? Maybe do a little uh, quick demo of maybe some simple. Why you did you started doing some? You want to go into more of the menu options or some of the features that Scratch can do? Yeah, or you guys could help her create a game. Yeah, pair 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 programming. Yeah, pair pair programming. Real impromptu. No, no, the A level. A level. A level. I see vector right there. So it does vector too. We have a pen out there. Fish three. Fish three. You need a penguin. So, when you talk about what's right, is the uh, is the dog is scratch the shoe always there, or is that just one of the sprites that you can use? Okay, I'm going to fill this with blue. Oh, 
evening. <laughs> show, show him, show him a, a fish bouncing back and forth. So then you can do like rotation or have him go other than uh, 300 or 180 and just do a random... Uh, <laughs> so are, are there sounds MP3 or wave format for the sound? I believe they're MP3. Or not. Yeah. Let's, check, let's, see what let's sounds check it out. Sounds tab up top next to the costumes. Oh. <laughs> 